So nice to have you along on this Tuesday for a look at your weather forecast. I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Woodall. We'll look at uh, right across the country, everywhere will be included. But let's start off by just looking at some evening icons because they vary pretty good, detailed. Look at this, two in Re Regina, one in Winnipeg, 11 for Toronto, 10 for Ottawa. So why the big warm up? Well, there's a warm front pushing through Ontario, uh, bringing some showers, less than five mil expected, up through the north about five to 15. But at least it's not snow. But this is a time where everybody's getting a cold, right? and starts to you know go around the office kevin yard tells us the benefits of the flu shot in such great video keep it coming we really appreciate that for it from you by the way share your weather is going to be happening today and uh, we'll see if i select your tweet or your your video uh, and then i give you a personalized forecast that's coming up this hour 10 degrees in gatineau nine for montreal rain this is that warm front that's pushing through not only just ontario but into quebec but cooling on the backside of it in fact cooled cool air this evening still pushing through uh, parts of the prairies all right let's go here Look at this. This is mainly because of such saturated ground and system after system. Uh, Dr. Doug Gillen will be coming up later to talk about the difference in our pattern, which will be good news because while we do have another push of moisture moving through into Thursday, it'll be less frequent. We have a bit of high pressure that builds in. That means clearing by Friday. And then the overall pattern in the long range looks a little bit more favorable as far as sunshine icons. Friday, Saturday, of course, Monday, Tuesday, but we do have a few uh, areas of rain and seasonal temperatures as well. All right, so it hasn't been seasonal in the prairie, especially through parts of uh, Manitoba. Uh, Saskatchewan, you're looking at just a dusting of snow. Let's show you more than a dusting. Yeah, I got a dusting in Ontario when I woke up on Saturday morning in Ancaster where I live, but not, not like that. So, all right, we'll continue to track this story, plus a look at flash flooding next. One of the most costly natural disasters right here in Canada is flash flooding in terms of property damage. And the reason it's so serious is because it can occur in any region, in the countryside or the city, and virtually at any time of the year. But it really depends on how much rainfall you've had lately in your neighborhood. That determines the saturation of the top layer on the ground. Again, flash flooding so serious because it can happen just like that. Here's what we mean. The heavy rain caused by thunderstorms or warm moist air rising rapidly into our atmosphere can produce flash floods. We're talking about 30 to 40 millimeters of rain in a very short period of time. Look what happens. That amount of rain could equal to one meter of water depending on the topography in your neighborhood. So here are a couple of tips to keep you safe. Firstly, stay away from creeks. As those then, they're certainly doing their uh, job to clean up that mess. And, you know, flash flooding, the number one killer in the U.S., so it's something to really take seriously. We don't see it quite as much this time of year. We usually see it more uh, after the, the winter melts or in th uh, summer thunderstorms. All right, some higher elevation residual mixed precipitation, so rain and snow. And then moving on the West Coast after this nice area of high pressure is going to be uh, some more rain, but it's going to be mostly through the Haida Gwaii area, the central and north coast. Could be getting some rain. In fact, for you on the West Coast, your pattern is going to be changing. And Dr. Doug Gillum is going to talk about why that happens. That's coming up this hour. We have a look at our icons. We see a few sunshine icons in there, which is great. All right, let's go to this. Beautiful. Nice. Yes, some, some bare trees, right? Only to become bare. Let's take a look. Five centimeters of snow possible up through northern Alberta, and then less than five along a warm front through the better part of the prairies. That warm front, though, if you're underneath it, like you, Calgary, you'll be warming up to about 10 degrees uh, in the next few days. So that'll be nice. And then that resi residual trough will bring some mixed precipitation. So mixing and breezy conditions, but no real big storm system to address today, which is good news. Five to 15 millimeters of rain with this area of low pressure that'll bring some evening showers through Ontario's commute. So Toronto's commute down through southern Ontario. And then in the long-range forecast, next weekend could be cool. How cool for Ontario? Science Mind the Weather, Dr. Doug Gillum joins me to talk about the polar vortex. We heard a lot about that word sure last did. year. Before we get to the polar part, what exactly is a vortex, Doug? Well, a vortex is any time you have spin or rotation within a fluid. And the atmosphere is a fluid. Right. And so the polar vortex is a region where we have spin, and it's okay counterclockwise spin and it's found near the pole. There you go, makes sense. All right, so here's a few talking points here for us. Uh it's just about always there around the calendar. Uh, and like you said, it's strongest in the winter time, sure. but it became a buzzword it last did. year. It's gonna become a buzzword probably again as we go into next week, but it's nothing new. Okay. Uh, but it sometimes mm -hmm. breaks into pieces. It's not always a single polar vortex. Okay. Sometimes it found multiple pieces and sometimes one of those pieces will 
come pretty far to the south. So that's the idea, is that right. it's always up here. We have these semi-permanent areas, these vortexes, but then chunks of it can actually dive south. Right. Now, often it will be in two pieces, with the two primary pieces in the vicinity of Baffin Island and also in northeast Siberia. And again, this vortex could drop all the way into southern Canada or just a little piece of it could drop down. And of course, everybody gets all excited that the polar vortex is here. But an interesting point last year, you know, the polar vortex is found in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. That's not where we live. No, no we don't. That's <laughs> but right. what we also had last year was air coming from Siberia over top of the pole at the surface. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the primary reason why it was so cold. And it affected many right across the country, whether right. you live out west or through central Canada or on the east coast. But how can this affect our long range? Not something we think about, but a typhoon overseas could actually yeah. have impact on our weather. Right. Now, we do have what was a super typhoon that will be taking a track to the east of Japan. And typically about a week after a typhoon takes this track, we see a real dip in the jet stream in the vicinity of the Great Lakes. And that's what we're expecting next week. And it's going to impact really all of Canada east of the Rockies, except for parts of Atlantic Canada. But the effects will be most felt around the Great Lakes. Oh, the Great Lakes. Speaking of that, that yeah. means to me that the lake effect machine might get going if it's cold enough. That's right. We will have likely a multi-day lake effect event middle to end of next week. Could see some substantial accumulations, but okay. the good news is the active storm track finally slows down for the West Coast. That's right. So, so many low pressure systems coming right. into the West Coast bringing constant rain. They'll finally have a storm track right. that takes a little bit further north, but the prairie is definitely cooling down. Thanks a lot for your analysis. Sure. And of course, the long range, like it or not, Dr. Doug always has the details. Thanks for joining us here on the Weather Network, your number one source for complete and accurate weather forecasts, uh, including your national forecast and some of our international stories that we're tracking. Let's get into that now. Typhoon Nuri, strong Category 4 storm. I learned today that a super typhoon would be winds of 240 kilometers an hour and above or a Cat 5. So, uh, so it could be a strong Cat 4 super typhoon or uh, winds at 240. Now this one is a uh, Cat 2, or sorry, Cat 4 with 222 kilometers per hour. It's moving north, northeast at 22. There's a lot of twos there, kilometers an hour. It's just going to skim Tokyo, likely as a Cat 1 storm before it takes off uh, out into the Pacific. Now speaking of the Pacific, we know a lot of our storm systems move over the Pacific from Asia and then move into the West Coast or some form of them, some remnant of them. That's going on still. Pretty active pattern on the west coast from Vancouver all the way up through Prince Rupert rain again, but then a bit of a break. It's going to be nice. Actually, Friday afternoon, it's going to be pretty decent. And then the storm track will slow down a little. Let's show you this. On the station, I'm a huge dog lover. In fact, little hint sneak peek into our Share Your Weather segment. You're going to love it. You're going to think it's adorable. All right. 5 to 15 millimeters with this current low that's moving through. There is a cold front that's going to bring less than 5 millimeters down through southern Ontario. Not enough instability in the atmosphere to get thunderstorms, but you, you would think maybe because the temperatures are like this, 10s, 11s for this time of year. Very, very mild. I know I was cleaning my house this morning. And I was working up a sweat because it was so warm outside. So, yeah, the heaters aren't on. Kevin Yard has the latest on the Ontario weather plus flute season. Yeah, whether you like needles or not, probably a good idea. There's that cold front that I'm talking about. We have some winds through uh, Quebec City and some precipitation through your uh, Tuesday into Wednesday. But on the East Coast, things quieting down. Out West, very chilly temperatures by tomorrow morning. Minus fives is mi minus fives and minus six. All right. Yeah, I think our time is up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that at the end there. That guy that says, oh, yeah, everybody in the newsroom saying it right now. All right, let's take a look this evening. Two degrees in Regina, three in Calgary with a few showers. Quite the temperature difference between Toronto and in the prairies. 11 degrees with some showers in Toronto. With the latest on how the weather can affect you, specifically vitamin D, here's Kevin. And I just got to say, I love Target. That is one of my favorite stores. It really is. All right. Wednesday morning, it's going to be cool across the prairies. Minus fours, minus sevens. The Paw, look at this, Thompson at minus 13. How long will that last? You have to stick around. You'll see our Long Ranger report. But Wednesday evening, this is the 850 millibar temperature level. That's just above the, app, uh, the surface. And we have some warm air moving in through Calgary. Get ready for about 10 degrees. All right. Share your weather time here on TWN. Send us 
your pics, your videos via our website or Twitter. Sometimes I ask a question on Twitter to get the conversation going, and we want you to share some of your weather moments at 44 minutes past the hour. I then select the best one, and then I showcase it, and I give you a personalized forecast where you live. So check this one out. Oh, yeah. There's that oh, yeah, again. Look at that puppy dog. That's Sudbury, Ontario, playing in the fresh snow. Yes, Cheryl, and I'm sorry about the snowfall, but good news for Cheryl and the little Boston Terrier. You're going to be running in uh, partly cloudy conditions on your Wednesday afternoon. It'll be six degrees, so uh, enjoy that after that a little blast of winter weather. In fact, let's take a look at your seven-day forecast as well, and we'll see how you fare out for the rest of the week. We are dropping in temperatures, especially by early next week.